Hello everybody, my name is Jane Robertson and I work for the Scottish Bible Society. I'm their Children's Resources Manager and I was due to be with you today sharing worship and presenting you with your 30 copies of Dear Theo. You won 30 copies of Dear Theo last year at Heart and Soul and we're going to be thinking a wee bit, a wee bit more about that book uh, later on in this reflection. It's amazing to be with you and I'm so sorry that it's in a very different way than it should have been. But hopefully today we will be blessed by God as we spend time listening to his word. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you love us so much that you gave us a special gift of the Bible. Thank you that in the Bible we find out what you're like, we find out how much you love us and we discover the kind of people you want us to be. Be with us today and help us to come closer to you as, you, as we listen to your words. Amen. The Bible is an old book. The Bible can be a difficult book. And it's also a book that was written in a very different time and a very different place from the one that we find ourselves in. And although it was written for us, it wasn't written to us. And so we need help to read it, to understand it and to engage with it. And my job at the Scottish Bible Society is to help children, young people and all ages together get into the Bible, to understand it more, to have conversations about it and to make it more accessible. Last year we decided that we really wanted to hear from children and young people in Scotland about what they thought about the Bible. We wanted to know what helped them read it and what got in the way, what made it difficult. So we travelled around the country, we visited a number of churches and we spoke to small groups of children and young people aged from 8 to 14 about their experience of the Bible. And throughout those conversations in very diverse places in our country, we found five key themes that came out of the conversations with those young people. The first thing about the Bible is that it's not its size that often causes people problems. It's its format. The chapters, the verses, the columns, the small font. It makes it different from other books. Young people talked about how they read big books. They read Harry Potter, which were very long books, some of them. But the Bible was difficult because of its format and it made them struggle to read it in the way they would read other books. Secondly, they struggled with issues in the Bible that seemed to them to clash with the culture in which they lived. Now, a number of years ago, this might have been theological questions or questions about God, but the questions these young people were asking were moral and ethical. And they needed spaces to have these conversations about the parts of the Bible that they just couldn't work out how that fitted in to life today. Thirdly and very encouraging was that for most of these young people, primary school had been a place where they really engaged with the Bible, mainly through their school chaplain. Fourthly, they really enjoyed visualisation of the Bible, illustrations, cartoons, pictures, videos, images. They really enhanced their understanding. And really, in a way, illustration is a form of translation. Around the world, the Bible has been translated into other languages, not, not the one that we speak, but into people's heart languages. And for these young people, part of their heart language seemed to be through image. And lastly, they needed intergenerational communities to understand the Bible. They needed parents, grandparents, youth workers, other members of the Christian community to sit down with and talk about the Bible together. It was delightful to hear these comments and we wanted to hear them so that the things we produce would be more helpful to young people in our country. And Dear Theo, as I mentioned earlier, is one such product. Dear Theo is the books of Luke and Acts, both written by Luke. He says at the start, I wanted to write to you, my dear friend, Theophilus. Now, Theophilus means loved by God. We don't know if he was a real friend of Luke or if Luke meant all of us because we're all loved by God. So that's why it's called Dear Theo. 
And in Dear Theo, uh, we've used the new international reader's version. It has less complex sentences. It's a full translation of the Bible, but it just flows better. And as you'll see, there's no columns, there's no chapters, there's no verses. And there's some beautiful illustrations, but maybe not beautiful, quirky illustrations by Jason Ramasamy, which really helped to open up the text. I've sat with young people who, when they've opened up Dear Theo, have said, wow, it's like reading an ordinary book. Is this really the Bible? It's only part of the Bible, but it is the Bible. So we want Dear Theo to help people of all ages to be able to read the Bible in a way that they can understand. So today I want to read uh, a bit from Luke, uh, the book of Luke. I do believe Luke is a master storyteller. And one of his most beautiful stories comes near the end of, of Luke. It's a Sunday afternoon. Some of Jesus' friends have left Jerusalem. The pain and the sadness of what they've seen on the Friday when Jesus died is just too much. They've now heard rumours that maybe he's not in the tomb that they put him in. And they start to walk. They walk away. Their hearts are heavy. And they just want to go home. Let's listen together. So it's in Luke chapter 24, but of course in Dear Theo, it's just a page number. That same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus. It was about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked about those things, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But God kept them from recognising him. Jesus asked them, what are you talking about as you walk along? They stood still, and their faces were sad. One of them was named Cleopas. He said to Jesus, Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? What things? Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to set Israel free. Also, it's the third day since all this happened. Some of our women amazed us too. Early this morning, they went to the tomb. But they didn't find his body. So they came and told us what they'd seen. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And some of our friends went to the tomb they saw it was empty just as the woman had said they didn't see jesus body there jesus said to them how foolish you are how long it takes you to believe all that the prophet said didn't the messiah have to suffer these things and, and then receive his glory jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures he began with moses and all the prophets they approached the village where they were going jesus kept walking as if he was going further but they tried hard to keep him from leaving. They said, stay with us. It's nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. He joined them at the table and he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognised him. But then he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, he explained to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven disciples and those with them. They were all gathered together. They were saying, It's true, the Lord has risen. He has appeared to Simon. Then the two of them told what had happened to them on the way. They told how they had recognised Jesus when he broke the bread. The beautiful story of the road to Emmaus. There's so many things in this story for us today. But the first thing is that these disciples were broken people. Their hearts were so heavy and they didn't know what the future held. And maybe for many of us in the situation we find ourselves in, that's how we feel today. Broken, heavy, sad, hopeless. But Jesus comes and he walks along beside them. And he doesn't right away tell them what to do or to change how they feel. He just listens. He listens to their stories and their situation. 
And then as he's listened, he begins to tell, begins to tell them another great story. Stories from the Old Testament that these people knew so well. They'd heard them all their lives. And Jesus begins to explain why all the terrible things had had to happen. And why it was all part of God's plan. And it wasn't the end. It was the start of something new and incredible and beyond their understanding. And as they listened to these words of Jesus, their hearts burned within them. Something was changing. Hope was visible again. Do we need to hear God's words today, this week? Let's do that. Let's open up the Bible and hear him speak. Maybe a dear Theo would help you do that. And this burning in their heart is so powerful that they, they don't want him to go. Don't go, Jesus. Don't go. Come in. They don't know it's Jesus at that point. And they invite him into their homes. Have we invited Jesus into our lives? Maybe not once, long ago. Maybe we did. But do we invite him every day? Do we need to invite him for the first time or the millionth time? Every day saying to him, come into my life, Jesus. Be part of what I'm doing. Don't leave me. And Jesus goes in and he sits down and he gives thanks for the food. And as he breaks the bread, they realise it's Jesus. He isn't dead. He's alive. And the first thing they want to do after he's disappeared is to go and tell other people this amazing good news. Who could we tell this week? Who can we ask and explain to that they too can know this amazing good news of Jesus who walks with us, listens to us, gives us God's words of life and comes in and is part of our life? Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for this beautiful story. Thank you for a story of broken people who met with you and heard from you, invited you into their lives and then went and told others. Amen. So you can find out more about Dear Theo on our website, uh, scottishbiblesociety.org. And when you're there, have a look around in the resources part and we've, we've written outlines, which maybe are not for just now in the time we're in, but they're just ways of having conversations with people who are maybe younger than us about the stories in this incredible book. Who could you give a dear Theo to? Who could really do with hearing those words of Jesus, just as those disciples did such a long time ago? Or maybe it's you. Maybe you want to hear these words from dear Theo. Thank you so much for letting me share with you today. And I pray that we would all continue to know Jesus walking with us. And we would continue to invite him into our lives. I'm going to say the grace together. I'm going to do some actions that I often do when I'm with people of lots of ages when we do the grace. So I always do this. I say, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, because grace is a gift. So we want to give that to each other. May the love of God just give yourself a hug because we're a bit short of hugs just now, aren't we? And the friendship of the Holy Spirit. So if you're with someone just now, hold their, hold their hands or just hold your own hands and know that God is holding your hands. So let's do that together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.